When I mention the spider, especially to those who aren't familiar with it, the first thing they want to know is, does it carry rabies? The answer is no. Rabid wolf spiders do not carry the fatal rabies virus. In the wild, only mammals carry it. They are reportedly so named due to their rapid, erratic movements. And both of those adjectives are excellent descriptors. This spider tends to freak out and run away when it's scared. And despite their scary appearance, name, and behavior, these spiders are harmless to people. And by harmless, I mean their bite is not medically significant. However, a bite would probably cause some pain, similar to a wasp or bumblebee sting, I would imagine. But these spiders are great to have around as they eat mainly insects that people consider pests. The rabid wolf spider is just one of nearly 250 species of wolf spider in North America and north of Mexico. Adults are typically active June through October in most of their range. The rabid wolf spider is brownish yellow overall. The cephalothorax has two lengthwise brown stripes, as seen here, while the abdomen has one large dark brown stripe between two pale areas, as seen here. Additionally, on the abdomen's dark center stripe, there are several tan spots or stripes that, on most individuals, look like incomplete chevrons. The very similar looking dotted wolf spider does not have the tan markings on the dark center stripe of the abdomen. Another thing, rabid wolf spiders often have small, light-colored eyebrow-like marks behind the eyes, as seen here. But these eyebrows can be faint or nearly non-existent. Male and female resemble each other, but the male's first pair of legs are black or very dark brown, as seen here. Additionally, adult females are larger than males. The female grows to about one inch in length, not including the legs, while the male grows to about three quarters of an inch, not including the legs. However, both appear larger than that. Like all wolf spiders, the rabid wolf spider has four large eyes and a trapezoid shape on the top of the carapace. The two median eyes in this group of four are the largest and face forward. The two smaller eyes in the group set behind the two central eyes, facing to the side or backwards. In front of those eyes is a row of four smaller eyes, as seen here. Rabid wolf spiders eat mostly ground-dwelling insects and other spiders. Insects taken include cockroaches, crickets, caterpillars, grasshoppers, katydids, moths, stink bugs, etc. However, like other spiders, they tend to take whatever they can overpower. Like most wolf spiders, they don't create webs for capturing prey. Instead, they hunt for food. And they hunt at night, and usually spend the day in burrows. Rabid wolf spiders will sometimes ambush prey, but often they use their great speed to chase it down and pounce on it. And from what I've witnessed, their jumps are pretty darn fast. Maybe not as quick as jumping spiders, but it's up there. Wolf spiders spend most of their time on the ground, but sometimes they will climb in search of prey. For instance, here's a young female wolfie that climbed up to a window screen near a porch light to grab a moth. And here, this rabid wolf spider captured a cricket on the side of a building. Rabid wolf spiders are preyed upon by many creatures, including birds, dogs, snakes, and even other spiders but probably the biggest threat to wolf spiders, besides people, are spider wasps. However, adult spider wasps don't eat spiders. Oh no, it's much, much worse than that. Spider wasps are, in a sense, zombie makers. Once the wasp stings its victim, the venom paralyzes the spider. The wasp, which has Herculean strength, then drags the immobile spider to a nest site. Once there, she lays a single egg on the upside down spider's abdomen. The egg later hatches and the larva feeds on the still living spider. But if that isn't macabre enough, the larva saves the vital organs for last so that the spider can remain as fresh as possible. It is unknown whether or not the spider feels pain or is even aware of what is going on during this process which often takes weeks. Imagine being paralyzed, then dragged to a lair where some monster lays its egg on you. You just lie there in something the size of a coffin. Then something hatches and slowly eats you alive, but saves your heart, lungs, and brain for the end. 
Yikes. Rabid wolf spiders typically inhabit meadows, open woods, grasslands, cotton fields, and even residential areas. They will also inhabit vacant structures and occasionally wander into homes, probably by accident when hunting prey attracted by porch lights. In the United States, these spiders can be found from the Great Plains states to the East Coast. During the mating season, male rabid wolf spiders locate females by following their silk drag lines that are laden with pheromones. They will then court females with a series of leg extensions and pedipalp drumming, as seen here. The rabid wolf spider has the ability to make sound, which is uncommon and is the focus of several studies on insect communication. During courtship, males make sounds, such as clicking, as heard here. While mating, the pair is positioned so that the male is mounted on top and anti-parallel, i.e. facing the opposite direction, to the female, as seen here. From his position, the male reaches between the female's fourth leg and her abdomen to access her reproductive opening with his pedipalp to make an insertion and transfer his stuff. Male rabid wolf spiders make multiple insertions with a single female before dismounting. During copulation, the female rotates her abdomen to allow the male access to her epigeum as she moves from side to side making insertions, as seen here. Some scientific studies are suggesting that a male may pass along special pheromones to the female, which, in a sense, will put her in a trance while mating is in progress. This female quiescence probably lessens the likelihood of her killing and eating the male after copulation. At the conclusion of this particular mating session, which lasted for more than two hours, the male bounced up and spun around off of the female with lightning speed. In other words, he hightailed it out of there just to make sure. The female, who was really calm and well fed, seemed quite surprised by the male's freak out. Perhaps she was under a spell of sorts. Breeding usually occurs from late summer to early fall. The female creates an egg mass with a silken cocoon and attaches it to her spinnerets at the back side of the abdomen. The cocoon darkens from shiny white to dirty brown before the eggs hatch. Spiderlings ride on their mother's back until they are ready for dispersal. I once read in a social media post by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service that, once the eggs hatch, the baby spiders hitch a ride on the mother's back where they stay until they get big. And I thought, well, that seems a little vague. In fact, it seems a lot vague. Until they get big? How big? Full-grown adults? Seems like it would get a bit crowded up there. <laughs> 